the Super Secret Sex Show. Here we are. Welcome back. You found the Super Secret Sex Show. I'm your host, John, and with me this week, someone you're going to love. It's Tim. Hey there, Tim. Hey there, John. How's it going? What was it about the Super Secret Sex Show that uh, made you say, yeah, I need to be a part of that? You know, I, I've seen all of the other episodes thus far. I have been, you know, I, I enjoyed doing the show and watching the show back when we did it live um, as for like a second half of our live uh, shows back in the day. And it's one of those things that, you know, I don't have a lot of experience with, with sex and, and, you know, topics on that as, as well as probably a lot of other people do. Um, but it's something that I do feel is something that should be a bit more open and talked about. Um, and unfortunately just, just isn't. And I think that's, you know, a lot of that's due to that kind of closed off sheltered, like Protestant, like really like the kind of Christian prudent background. So. Well, you don't have to have any specific <clears throat> type of experience to talk about it and discuss it and figure out uh, how things ought to be done, I guess. I agree. I agree. Spoiler alert. There's no one right way. Oh, in all these years, I was thinking there was one definitive answer. All that years fact, of research. Uh, the more I think about it, if you do it right, there are several right, right ways to do it. So <laughs> I believe it. So, Tim, tell me, how did you first learn about sex? I, I, I'm pretty positive I never had the talk with my folks it probably would have been sex ed at school, like somewhere around middle school, sixth or seventh or eighth grade, probably for me. So you, so was, got your first, you got your first hint of sex education from somebody who was wearing a white polo shirt and red shorts. Most likely, yeah. It either would have been that or possibly porn because I, that was around the same time, but. Also white polo shirt and shorts, yes. That's right, exactly. Yeah, and thank goodness for both of those people. I was brought up as a Baptist, so uh, there's there's not a lot of talk I feel in that other than like there are things that you shouldn't do, like like sex before marriage, like you shouldn't happen, and like that was probably the extent that I got from my parents and or church on that subject. You know, I didn't even grow up in a religious environment, but that was still kind of the message in society. And I don't know, is mm. that still the message? Is that still out there? I've never been with someone long enough to really get near to the marriage thing or have been in that, that, you know, area, but the more I progress through life. And I mean, like I said, I've only had, I've only been with one person. Um, but I feel like it's important to, to pursue that before marriage, before even living together, because that is a huge part of any relationship, whether people say it is or not. Um, I feel like it is. And that's something that if you're not compatible in that way, then other areas might not also be compatible. And you would want to know that before committing to this one person for conceivably the rest of your life, if that's how you feel. And, you know, much the same way as like living together. I feel like that is something else that um, I was raised that it's like taboo um, because according to that background, living together also leads to sex. Um, well, if you're although, doing it right. Right. Yeah, naturally. Uh, although, I mean, I lived with another guy for for several years and we never had any hints of doing that. So Missed opportunities, uh, sir. I know. I know. I mean, if anything, I'm such a huge cuddly bear. Like who wouldn't want to hit this? Uh, <laughs> well, you know, cuddling leads to sex so it's true so does dancing yes those parents in footloose had it right <laughs> but what about those in dirty dancing they parents like are the together. worst i guess they so are. This, this is what well, movies have taught us is it more specifically probably 80s to 90s movies are there any 80s or 90s movie parents that are worth anything at all hi <gasps> let's see i don't know the goonies parents were not really existent there anywhere well, they let their uh, children wander around a sewer, so how present could they have been? May maybe, like, the Harley I Shrunk the Kids parents. 
Oh, yeah. You know, every good parent shrinks their children down to the size of an ant, right? <laughs> well, that was an accident, though. Like, at least, at least, Rick. Like, oh, dear. I, I, left I, my, I left my very dangerous science room unlocked. And the kids <laughs> got in and started pushing buttons. <laughs> as kids do. That's just part of growing up. Tim, I'll have you know small. I have children. I have never shrunk them to the size of an ant. Maybe if anybody's watching this show right now, if you think of an 80s or 90s dad or a mom that's worth their weight in gold, leave it down below in the comments. I mean, I, I've seen a lot from the 80s and 90s, and I can't really think of a good, a good amount. I really can't. But so, I mean, but as far as that movie goes, as far as Honey Shrunk the Kids, I, I can never picture Rick Moranis being a bad parent. He probably also never had the talk with his kids. I don't know. I don't know how any of this works. Your mother and I conceived using a robot. <laughs> uh, someday, John. <laughs> Sex robots will be more of a thing. Probably. I don't know. The sooner the better, sir. Do you feel like having sex robots as more of a feasible option would be something that would maybe drive people to never like go out and meet more people on the one hand i can see where that would be a healthy outlet for you to be able to get get that not out of your system but to i mean it's the same it would essentially be like masturbation the amount of technological advance that we would have to have to make a sex robot a feasible replacement for an actual human th that's many hundreds of years in the future i would imagine so until then it's basically just another sex toy and for most people a sex toy is not a suitable replacement for a person i can agree with that i'm curious to know what what that experience would be like having like a one night stand where it's just not as quite big a deal um because i i feel like i have to have an emotional connection with somebody i think before i could before I could have sex with them. Yeah, I mean, to me, there is no such thing as meaningless sex. I think it has meaning in some form, no matter mm. how it happens, even if it is just a one-time connection. Those both parties, or you know, all parties involved are technically getting something out of the experience. It's whether pushing it's, some button back in your, you know, animal brain back there. Mm -hmm. your hippocampus is just you know flashing and lighting up and you got the serotonin everywhere and it's mm. for some people that kind of a relationship i think is a better fit for their lifestyle that, I like that. i said there's no wrong way to do it and i think you have to try a lot of things before you find the thing that works for you that is all the time we have today tim thanks so much for joining me will you come back again tomorrow Oh, absolutely. I wouldn't dream of not being here. Okay.